Hello, my name is Alan Benjamin. I'm a guitarist and multi-instrumentalist from the band Advent. I'm here in New Jersey today to speak with you about configuring submixes in Reaper. On today's agenda, we'll begin by reviewing what a submix is and why you might want to create one in the first place. Then we'll look at the two basic methodologies in Reaper for doing so, the first being track folders and the second manual bus routing. Submixing allows for the logical grouping and mixing of tracks into new individual tracks, each creating what I'll call a mix within a mix. Let's take a look at a very common example. Here we have a drum kit that was recorded with 10 separate microphones, each recorded on its own track. Say we wanted to put a fade out on this drum kit, we would need to manipulate all 10 faders simultaneously to do so, and note that they don't even start at the same location to begin with, so that would be pretty difficult. Also, if we wanted to apply a single effect to the overall drum kit, we would need 10 instances of that plugin to make sure that we got every element of the kit affected. Now let's route that mix of the 10 drum channels into a submix bus and place that into the input of a new channel in our mixer or DAW. And that now gives us one place where we can apply a fade out or insert a plugin effect that will cover in one instance every single element of that drum kit. As I mentioned before, there are two basic options in Reaper to create a submix. The first, track folders, is a true hierarchical construct that's very similar to the example we just saw with the drums. In this case, none of the individual tracks in the submix will be directed to the master bus. They will all go through that submix track. In the case where you want to route a send to an overall global effect, like say a reverb, but you want the primary output to go to the master bus, then I would recommend the second approach, manual bus routing. A very important aspect of folder tracks in Reaper is that they must be bound to a contiguous number of adjacent higher numbered member or child tracks. So for example, if you wanted to take tracks 6 through 10 and combine them into a submix, the resulting folder track would need to be on track 5, and you can insert and or rearrange tracks in Reaper to facilitate this process. There are two methods for creating track folders in Reaper. The first is by toggling the folder icons that are located in each track of the track control panel or TCP. In that case, you would take the desired folder track and click on the folder icon until it is set to the track as folder status. Then go to the final desired child track in the construct and click on that folder icon until it's set to the track as last track in folder status. The second method is drag and drop. Here we select or highlight the intended child tracks in the track control panel and drag them upwards, releasing in the intended folder track. No matter how you create your track folders, the result should look something like this. Please note I've included examples from both the track control panel and mixer control panel perspectives and I've also highlighted the icons that are critical here, those being the track is folder icon and the track is last track and folder icon from both perspectives. Now here's a brief example of applying a plugin, in this case a reverb, to a folder track, affecting all of the subordinate tracks underneath. And also a real life example from my band's upcoming recording where we have two folder tracks, one for three harmonized guitars and the other for 14 tracks of drums. Now let's look at manual bus routing. One of the coolest things in Reaper is that every new track already has its own input bus. So all you really need to do is create a send on another track and connect it to this input bus that's already created for you. To create a new manual bus connection in Reaper, just click on the IO button of a track in either the TCP or MCP. That will open up a routing window. From there, click on add new send. That will present a pull down where you can choose your desired destination track. In this case, I've chosen a reverb on track 10. Once a destination track is selected, a box will appear with corresponding settings, including volume, pan, and pre or post fader sending. In this example, I added two more sends to the same reverb track, then opened up the IO on that reverb track where you can see all three receives are present. I'm running out of time, but would like to leave you with these last two reference slides. The first showing the results of the routing we just did, along with an example of a plugin and some additional information. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and I welcome your feedback. Happy tracking!